A pair of AL clubs. It's the Tampa Bay Rays against the Chicago White Sox. Only on 2K Sports. It's all about the American League, the Chicago White Sox. Now we'll see the lineup for the Rays, sponsored by Pepsi. Any of these bats stand out, John? Well, one of the most exciting players in baseball, center fielder who can go get him with the best of them. He has a cannon of an arm, one of the best in all of baseball, and he can get him. Leadoff hitter Carl Crawford. For the Tampa Bay Rays, left fielder, number 13, Carl Crawford. Look out, that one ran in and got him. I don't think this was the game plan when they sat down before the, the game even started. First batter takes his base by getting hit with a pitch. And we've got Bartlett batting. Oh, Gary, we see that guy get hit with a pitch. I mean, sometimes, listen, as a pitcher, you just lose a grip on the ball. It doesn't come out of your hand the right way. You end up hitting somebody. In there from Oswald, 101. And the question after you've hit a batter like we've seen here, Steve, is as a pitcher getting your focus back. Yeah, but listen, it's only one runner on. Take a deep breath. Get yourself back and settle down a little one, bit and, and make sure you're right. Slider just off the black that time, two and one. Tampa Bay won last night. Now game two, so we'll uh, see if they can go to oh, Crawford. Here we go. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. And he gets in there without a throw. And that swung on and hit Rios. That's one down. And a moment to check out the defensive alignment for the White Sox. So you keeping an eye on anyone? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. And Oswalt misses. Evan Longoria has established himself as one of the best third basemen in all of baseball, if not the best, in such a short time. Only two full seasons in the major leagues. 33 home runs, 113 RBIs in 2009. The 2-0 pitch. Well, with three balls, Longoria now in the driver's seat in this at bat. Certainly Evan Longoria... Not happy that a teammate was injured in his first major league season, but it brought him up earlier probably than Tampa Bay would have had him at the major leagues, and they're happy it did because he was ready. Well, you know what I like about it? When they brought him up, they knew he was going to be a special player, and a lot of times they try to protect guys. They put him hitting eighth or ninth to protect him. They stuck him in the middle lineup and said, here, go play and produce for us, and he helped lead them to the World Series in 2008. And it's Carlos Pena now. Uh, very low average 208 last year against the White Sox. That ball swung on hit Rios to field it and that one's going to drop in. That'll be our first hit of the game. And Crawford scores. What a great piece of hitting right there to give his team that early one nothing lead. And we're going to see Zobrist here getting out in front any time of the ball game you want to do that. Now you try and build on it. Well, that's a good piece of hitting right there to take an early lead in this game. Ball. And Oswald's pitch misses inside. It's very early, so it may not stand up, but uh, far better to be playing with the edge. Well, that's right, Gary. I mean, they're going to try to use that edge to add right. some padding to this lead. That catches the inside part of the plate, 101. Well, 2009 was a breakout year for Ben Zobers. Where did he come from? Played in 152 games, played multiple positions for Joe Madden and the Tampa Bay Rays, and put up monster numbers with home runs and RBIs. Joe Madden called Ben Zobers his MVP, his most versatile player. If there was a need, Zobers seemed to fill it. Well, and along with Carlos Pena, they formed a pretty formidable duo in the middle of that Tampa Bay Rays lineup. At 
Very unexpected. You want to see if he can do it again, though, to prove that he's an everyday big league player. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. That gets in there. Zobris, base hit. Here's Longoria headed home. Longoria scores. Right fielder, number 27, Gabe Kepler. One out with runners at first and second. And doing the pitching, it'll be John Danks as they make the pitching swap. Well, no one's going to argue about this decision. I mean, if you don't think you've got effective pitching, you've got to think about taking them out. It's the right move. Runners on first and second with one out. Danks gets set and delivers. Slider just misses one and all. Oh, it's a good pitch there. Tried to get him to chase it out of the zone. He just laid off. Ready with a 1-0. 1-0 right. pitch. That's a cutter in there. 1-1. -on -one. You can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. Shot towards the hole. And Conerco makes the catch. And they'll try and hold the runners. Second and first. They stay. Well, he got a good piece of this one. Hitting a shot toward first base. But first baseman was there for the out. And we're going to see Joyce here. Uh, he's at an even 200 lifetime against the White Sox. And there's Quentin for out number three. Early scoring. That's always a blessing. They get it going here. The Rays lead it two to nothing. Andy Sonnenstein gets ready to throw. He's starting for Tampa Bay. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? A pretty even matchup right now. You've got a lineup that does struggle at times to score runs, but you've also got a right-hander on the mound who can't give up some runs. So it's going to be interesting to see who wins in execution in this one. There's a swing and a smash. Upton to feel this one. And he grabs it in his tracks. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Guillen's got going. Thoughts, John? Anybody stand up? Well, the potential's there for Alex Rios to be a productive hitter. So let's see if he can provide some offense for his team today because they're going to need it. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And a struggling season in 2009 for Alexi Ramirez. Here was a guy that they thought they would put at the top of their lineup. He'd steal a lot of bases, but unfortunately, he got off to such a bad start. Hit up the middle. Gets through. That's the team's first hit. Now's a good time to take a quick look at how the Rays will be taking the field on defense. And, uh, Steve, individual factors out there. For Kyle Crawford, speed is an asset on offense, but it's also an asset on defense. That speed allows him to cover a lot of ground out there. He's a center fielder playing left field. Alexei Ramirez, yet another one of the uh, Cuban defectors getting a chance to play Major League Baseball. Well, and the White Sox seem to think that he could be a top of the order wow. guy. He struggled in 2009, but if he can rebound from the 2009 season and have a season like he did in 2008, and along with Gordon Beckham, they have a great one two punch. Strike two, Sonnenstein's in the driver's seat. Well, as a hitter, if you're looking for something off speed, you don't swing at anything hard, but that's what he did. He wasn't expecting that speed, and he swung late. Able to set him down there, chalk that one up as a strikeout for him. But well, good, great confidence right there in his stuff. Could have wasted a pitch right there, but he figured, why worry? That's a great job of finishing off the batter in a hurry. Never got a chance to see much. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He's the league leader in hits. He waved at that breaker and misses, and an 0 1 count. Here's the 0 1 pitch by Sonnenstein. Strike two. Now, with no balls, two strikes, Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. Well, he throws his cut fastball hard, and it has that good movement. He still gets that up in the zone, was able to blow it by him at the level. And it's through into the gap, should be extra bases. And he pulls into second base. That will be a double. Here's what that double has done. A look at our Pepsi WPA graph.
Well, three hits and a loss there last game, but I tell you what, he continues to swing the bat like this. They're not going to have many losses in the column. Runners at second and third with two out. Drill towards the hole. And Ramirez is home. Now batting for the Chicago. Now pitcher making a mistake right here, leaving it right over the heart of the plate. He squares it up, drives it. Good contact at the plate to drive in a run. Most of those kind of pitchers are going to get hit. That's an RBI knock. The pitch from Sonnenstein hit sharply towards the hole. It's through. The runner's going to come home. Now batting. Leave a pitch over the center of the plate like that, you're going to pay for it. Well, no doubt about it. Big leaguers take advantage of those kinds of mistakes. Chance to drive it a run, A.J. Pierzynski. Steve, a chance now for this lineup to have tied it up next to try and uh, find a way to get a lead. But Gary, that was an important at bat even early on in this game. He chases that one high, starts out with a strike. Yeah, you know they uh, show they can recover. Back up the middle. Oh, terrific dive by Bartlett. And he will take it himself for the out. What an individual effort. So they pick up four hits in the inning and two runs across. We've got a stalemate. And if you are just tuning in, hi, Gary Thorne along with John Crux, Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. And it's B.J. Upton now. Danks gets set and delivers. First pitch is a slider low, 1 and 0. Oh. Good spot there, just down a little bit out of the zone. Tried to get him to chase, he wouldn't go for it. That one swung out of miss by Upton. Strike evens it up. The 1 1 pitch. Frozen on the changeup, and it's 1 and 2 now. A very effective pitch. The changeup painting the outside corner. Now you can go back hard in or go soft away again. It's hit foul by Upton. And the one two pitch from Dykes. Good cutter. Swung on and missed for the first out. Number three. Now we're going to get another look here at that cut fastball here at KCAM. We've seen go after the inside part of the plate here. Boy, he really did. He just bombarded the inside half of the plate. Well, as a hitter, you just have to get your timing down a little bit better. And he certainly didn't have it there. Navarro at the plate. That swung on and hit. Quentin's going to play it. That one's low. Certainly uh, four Danks. One of the problems is, is learning to stay out of that too fat part of the strike zone. Sometimes he just puts pitchers right down the middle and really doesn't have to because he's, he's. Oh, that is hit well off the bat of Crawford. And there's the third up. Three up, three down this half inning. And here's Mark Tian leading it off. One of the best batting averages in the league. Mark Tian. The pitch from Sonnenstein. Swung on a fly ball heading towards the corner and right. And that one goes foul. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out. And a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. And that gets down for a base hit. That'll bring up Mark Conce. Here's what the Rays have in store. One game left for the White Sox. That's tomorrow. They'll head home to match up against the Blue Jays. Great series there. That's a three-game series. And after that, they face another competitive team at home. The Oakland Athletics. Home sweet home for a while here. They'll try to make the most of it. A smash towards the hole, and nobody gets this one. That's going to go for a base hit. Good offensive chance here. Well, even though they lost the last game, he had two big hits, and that's a good sign if you're the manager of this team that he's starting to swing the bat really well. 
And Posednik's batting. There's a swing towards the hole. And the play made by Longoria. And the runners will have to hold at first and second. RBI situation, Alexei Ramirez. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored, top five. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Not sure what he was going for on that one. That's a bad pitch that was down in Mother Earth. The pitch from Sonnenstein. Swung on, line to right field. So that puts Paul Canerco at the plate. They tried to go down with that 0 1 pitch, but he gets it right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and he took advantage of it. Swings and misses the slider 0 and 1. But once you make the decision to swing, you have got to swing the bat. He waited a little too long. He wanted to swing a little earlier. His indecisiveness, though, caused him to swing late and miss it. That's it foul by Conurco. Swing and a ball hit very high, soaring straight away left field. Goodbye, he's done it, a big grand slam. From a tie game to a four-run lead, oh my, what a difference one pitch makes. Boy, that win expectancy's got to be moved on a grand slam. Let's take a look. Brought to you by Pepsi. Now you talk about big hitting. How about Grand Salami? No little ball. And that kind of a cut. And what a lead. Boy, he drove that one. Now, if you want to win baseball games, you have to avoid innings like this. Number the Tampa pitcher struggling. Base is empty. One out. First pitch to Quinton. Hit hard to second. Zobris. Two down. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow night. It'll be Ian Kensler and the Texas Rangers. They take their game to Boston to challenge the Red Sox at Fenway. It's going to get underway at 7 Eastern. Oh, Gary, that should be a fun one to watch for sure. And Beckham's in the box. He had four hits and 13 ABs last year off the Rays. The pitch from Sonnenstein swung on and fouled away. Strike two, Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. Three big hits in that game last night, and they'd love to get that. You're a out. swing and a miss, strike three, but a chance at first. And he's out. They get him with that throw to first base. Uh, Gary was really going for it there, but the catcher's able to get a handle on it, give it over to first base in time. If he doesn't get it there, who knows what it might lead to. Outstanding hustle to make sure he doesn't get on on a third strike. So they pick up four runs to break the tie. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. Playing under some nice weather today, at least cool weather. Still need to keep those pitching hands warmed up, though. And we've got Bartlett batting. Last time up, flew out. And here's the first one. Fastball taken high, 1-0. Well, if you weren't watching last night, you may not know he had two RBIs in that ball game. Swing, hot shot. Beckham. Yeah, that's that's one down. The Tampa Bay Rays. Well, we've got a moment Thursday. to look back to last year's Chicago Three. White Sox Evan and see how they board. ranked. Sixth in home runs, sixth in stolen bases, and they were in the top ten in team batting average with runners in scoring position, getting a lot of clutch base hits, and that's a great stat for a team that wants to win ball games. 
two away. Well, I followed the scouting reports. They moved the outfielders back before the play, and they were in exactly the right position to be able to make the catch. Good coaching. Here's the first one to Pena, the pitch. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. And he's not able to get there. And Pena stretching it now. No luck beating him That's to second. Player. He is in there. You'll take getting on base any time, any inning. It just doesn't matter. And here with this double, maybe it's a chance to get a two-out rally started. And we're going to see Zobrist here. Right there in the top five in home runs. And that one's put away to retire the side. So they pick up a hit but leave a man at second and fail to score. The White Sox six, Rays two. And if you've just joined us, our broadcast of Major League Baseball on 2K Sports with John Crock and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. And Alex Cerrillos to lead off in the top ten in hits. And he starts Rios out. Now swinging a shot towards second. One away now. Number 12 going to be Przinsky. Well, A.J. Przinsky put together a pretty solid season for the White Sox in 2009. Hitting 300. He doesn't strike out a lot. He's a contact guy. You'd like to see maybe drive in a little more runs. Only 49 RBIs. But I tell you what, what he does for the pitching staff is something that can't be ignored. Two away. And here in the early part of the season, we have a look at the Central Division standings brought to you by State Farm. First place, the White Sox. In the second spot, the Twins. Third, the Royals. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody, sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. And Mark Tiana, he's got one of the best averages in the American League. The pitch from Sonnenstein. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. Now with two down, they've got a man on board. Designated hitter, number 30, Mark Dobson. Now he tries to sneak one down and in to get the strike three call, but he fights it off. Outstanding job at the plate. And that is so demoralizing for a pitcher. You work so hard to get ahead in the count, and then you give up the base hit. Over near third, and it gets through. Great swing today. Now two hits. At Tremendous plate, situation now for the White Sox. Fielder, number 24. God, well, that's 10 hits right now in this ball game for him. And, you know, you're going to have to wonder how much longer the manager's going to stick with this guy. Two men on and two men out. Here's the first pitch. Hit up the middle. Sonnenstein. And the tag is applied. Side retired. So, no runs, two hits, and they strand two. And we'll see the Rays coming up next. As we take a look at Joe Madden. And some good pitching last inning. He now hopes to get the necessary offense going, get him going in the right direction. First pitch to him. There's a strike from Danks, now 0 and 1. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. The second pitch cuts on a fastball, misses, and it's 0-2. And Przinsky calls for the pitch. Change up in there, punches him up, number one. Well, he made that one look easy, huh? I mean, look at three pitches and a strikeout. And we're going to see Joyce here. He flew out his last time up. Danks gets set and delivers. Fastball, misses away, 1-0. Now the 1 0 pitch. And he looks at a fastball in there, 1 and 1. Well, that's a quality fastball right there, just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had no chance to put that one in play. Swung on, liner to right. That should be a base hit. And that's going to bring BJ up into the plate. Eastern Division standings starting to take shape here in April. Here in our State Farm standings board. Yankees in first place. 
Blue Jays in the second spot. Third goes to the Rays. Fourth belongs to the Orioles. And it's the Red Sox in last place. One out man on first. Here's the pitch. Watches a fastball that's in there. 0 and 1. Nothing in two ABs last year against John Danks. Catcher can't control it. And the throw. He's safe without a play. So they can't make the play. Well, listen, it's all about advancing base runners in the game. You've got to make plays defensively, but that error cost him, and he came out of his hand wrong, and the ball sailed on him. And Upton will watch that one up high. That one swung on a miss by Upton. Strike evens it up. And VJ Upton watching it go by for strike three. Well, he goes with the changeup, but he throws it right down the middle, and clearly the hitter was looking for something else. So Deanna Navarro thinking RBI. And one of the top ten averages right now. A swing and a foul off to the right side. Swing, a little line drive towards the middle. And that's going to be a base hit for Navarro. The throw, the run scores. Tampa Bay, just ride these bats as long as you can. Carl Crawford. Well, you know he's at an all-time high coming into this game. A big win in their last game. He had three hits to contribute. Things are going great for him right now. That pitch is not going to be in there from Danks. The 1-0 pitch. Swing liner back up the middle. That gets down. That'll put him on the tying run up. Good offensive chance here. RBI Chad's Jason Bartlett looking to make contact. First one to Bartlett. Here's the pitch. And Danks outside the zone for a ball. At the belt, the 1-0. Fastball just misses, and he falls behind 2-0. Line shot into center field. And that'll get him aboard there on a roll. And Navarro comes in. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. What more do you need to see? Now you have to question his confidence. Giving up three straight hits. Not much going right out there at this point. Evan Longoria at the plate. Offensively, the opportunity to pull it a little bit closer, and right now that offense looks as though they've got the ability to do that. Oh, Gary, that last at bat is exactly the kind of at bat that they needed. Quality, professional oh. approach, putting it in play. Now they're in a position maybe to tie this thing up early on. Here's the 1 0. Swing and a line at a right center. And that is in there, the go ahead run on board. And Crawford scores. Now coming to bat. Now the pitcher left us one over the middle part of the plate, right where the hitter can make contact. Good piece of hitting. Boy, with a run scoring there, that's a pretty pretty fat pitch in an RBI situation. Keep the rally going. Two men on, two men out. And we'll get to see Tony Pena pitching as they make the pitching swap. Runners at first and third with two away. And here's the pitch. I know a lot of pitchers like to pitch inside if they feel like the hitter's diving out over the plate. But I don't know what he was thinking right there. And we're going to see Zobrist here. And he's got a shot here to give his club the lead. Just one swing could do it. Well, this is what you're waiting for. This kind of opportunity to change the game. And your pitcher then can go out with much more confidence. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. A strike for five base hits in this inning and three runs up. Nice job by the Rays. They've got to work their way back and they've started. Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. Had a base hit his last time up. Harper will be the new pitcher. They've decided it's time to bring a new arm into this one. That's it. Pretty well down the line and left. It rolls all the way to the wall. There's the throw. 
easily safe at second. We talk about a guy who's swinging it right now as good as anybody. That's his third hit of the ball game thus far. Let's see if this can mount a rally with nobody out. Paul Canerco to the plate, runner in scoring position. Home runs leads the American League. And he starts Canerco out. Hot shot towards the hole. And he'll step on first for out number one. Now coming to bat. Good the piece Chicago of Wayne situational Wayne. hitting right there. Man on second. You got to get him to third. Carlos. Even with the out, he does it. Good piece of baseball. With one out and a runner on third, it's Carlos Quinton. No, oh, I'll tell you, everybody, Steve, I think notices when he gets to the plate, the attention deficit disorder just sort of goes away. And here's the delivery. There's a soaring high drive deep to left field, way back there. Yeah, I think he caught that thing. That was a rocket. Unbelievable. You look uh, for somebody to be injured on a play like that. Instead, you've got a guy who caught the ball. That's why they're all patting him on the back, because he saved their life. Well, another home run right there. That's two now. So really, this this lineup looking like they're getting very comfortable. Now, White Sox lead expanding here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Number 15, Gordon. One out, and nobody on. And the first pitch. Hit sharply towards the hole. And he steps on first. That's the second out. So Alex Rios, he'll try and keep it going. Batting average last year, not good. 206 against the Rays. Here's the delivery. Ball! And he lays off the pitch outside in low ball one. And when he can keep that thing down and away, it's nearly impossible to hit. The 1 0 now. Line towards second, and it's starting to head out towards the wall. He's thinking extra bases. So there are two men down here, but they do get a man in scoring position. Number 12, AJ Brzezinski. Oh, this is great patience at the plate. He lets the ball get deep in on the plate, comes in toward his hands, keeps his hands inside the ball, and drives it the other way. You make yourself a whole different ball player if you can take the ball the other way, as he just did. And doing the pitching, J.P. Howell. Here's a swing and a ball hit high into the air. Deep right field, way back there. And out of here, a home run, two runs, one swing. Pitch headed down and in, but somehow he's able to catch up to it. A tough pitch. You really have to have a quick bat to get to that one. Man, I don't know how you get a two-run homer in a pitch like this. Two-run homer. Huh? Now coming to uh, Gary, this offense has just been in control right here. Extending the lead, going to make it much more difficult to catch him later. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. This one into the alleyway should be extra bases. And he'll stop at second base, and it will be a double. Well, he's having a heck of a day so far. Just third hit of the game in this one. They just can't seem to find an answer for him. And here's Mark Kotze. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Sinker swung on, missed 0 and 1. I was coming off a game last night where he had two big hits, and looks like he's starting to get locked in a little bit. Hot shot towards the hole. And he'll step on first to retire the side. But not before they tally four times, thanks to two home runs in the inning. White Sox, they've got a commanding five run lead.
look at the manager, Ozzie Guillen. And now his lineup is in overdrive. An exciting bit of run production. A good way to keep your manager happy. On the way. Swung on, line softly towards center. And that's through a base hit. Now we'll look at the teams who led the league at extra base hits last year. Brought to you by State Farm. The Yankees, number one. Second, the Rangers. Third spot, the Red Sox. Jays, fourth. And at number five on the list, the Rays. Well, anytime you have a whole team. A swing, line to left center. And in there, he's two for three today. We'll see B.J. Upton next. Steve, sometimes that pitch down the middle you want to drive. He chose to take it the other way. A oh, good piece of hitting. You don't have to always pull that ball. You think up the middle at first and then adjust accordingly. Outstanding adjustment. It's now 0-1. Watch that fastball go by. Not good last year. One hit, 15 ABs off the White Sox here at U.S. Cellular Field. And Upton swings and hits this one. And it's going to be Quentin. Runner on his way to third. Stepping up to the plate for the Tampa Bay Rays. Catcher number three. So Deanna Navarro Deanna thinking Navarro. RBI. Uh, coming off a good ball game last night. Picking up two hits in that one. And the first pitch. Just missed with the fastball. 1-0. Oh. Well, that pitch right there just seemed to get away from the pitcher. Took off on him. Looked like he tried to overthrow that a little bit. And it gets through as Navarro drives in the run. Oh, well, actually, I guess he's not going anywhere. He'll stay third. Well, anytime you have two hits in a game, it will build confidence, and he's carrying it over into this game. Here's Crawford's first look. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0-1. Well, another outstanding season in 2009 for Carl Crawford of the Tampa Bay Rays. 60. This is in the air, straight away left. Here comes the runner for the plate. And a chance to check out the schedule for the White Sox. Tomorrow they wrap up this Tampa Bay series. The next series at home brings in a worthy opponent, the Seattle Mariners. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. After that, they meet up with Ian Kensler and the always difficult Rangers. That series bound to be competitive. Two outs, bases loaded. First one to Bartlett. Here's the pitch. Fastball in there, 0 and 1. A lifetime number, well, 259 off the White Sox. Now Przinsky positions himself. Pena with a strike two. Good pitch. Well, I tell you what, for two seam fastball, he had some good movement and good pop on that one. Batter swung late. And Bartlett lays off the low one. He deals. Good eye by Jason Bartlett staying away from that one, and we're even. At the belt, here's the 2 2 pitch. That's it, foul by Bartlett. Outside for a ball, and it's full, three and two. Runners go, 3-2 on the way. Battling here is Bartlett, fouls off another one. Well, this is one of these at-bats that you know you want to get something to drive. The bottom line is, though, the pitcher is not giving you anything to hit in a gap. So you're being defensive and fouling things off. This is a great battle right here. Hit hard to second. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. So they load the bases on the strength of three base hits, but no runs. The White Sox maintaining their lead. And for Sednick's back. Left fielder, number 24, Don Sednick. First pitch on the way. Swings, lines this one back up the middle, and that gets through for a base hit. So that brings Alexei Ramirez up. Well, this guy's always a threat to go. He steals a lot of bases, so they're going to have to keep a close eye on him, and maybe they'll make a mistake to the hitter paying attention to the runner. 
Now swing and a shot towards second. Gets one at second. And two, a double play. Here's a look, 4-6-3 on the double play. That's the way they teach you, whether you're at second base or shortstop. One fluid motion, get it out of the glove and get rid of it. And Paul Canerco to bat. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. First pitch is a sinker for a called strike. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. Swung on and ripped towards second. Into the alleyway. He'll likely get extra bases on this. So there are two men down here, but they do get a man in scoring position. Well, you know, he's feeling pretty good about himself right now. He's generating the first opportunity here with two outs to put up a run on this inning following his double. And it's Carlos Quentin in the box now. He homered earlier in the ball game. He was swinging the bat very well today and doing a little bit of everything. Driving in runs, hitting the ball out of the ballpark, having a good ball game. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. The White Sox, 10, raise five. Joe Madden there in the dugout. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. And here's the pitch to Longoria. Slider misses badly with it. 1 and 0. When a pitcher throws the perfect slider, there's a dot that appears on the ball where the seams come together. He throws that as well as anybody I've seen. One one on the way. Slider down at the shoe tops as he dances away. Well, that one runs in on the plate, close to hitting the batter, but now it keeps him from diving out over the plate. Hard grounded a short, fielded by Ramirez, and that'll set down Longoria. And when you're watching that pitch on the slider, Steve, we're looking for that movement sideways. Watch how much he gets. That's right. He comes across and down with that pitch. It's awfully tough to center. And Carlos Pena to bat. Well, Carlos Pena put together some power numbers. Struggled a little bit, though, with the batting average, hitting only 227. Thing is, though, he's a good defender, and he's a guy that leads in the clubhouse as well as on the field. Carlos Pena's played first base, maybe uh, go a little on notice because of his power numbers. But he's not bad over there. He picks them pretty good. No, he's very good. He saves him a lot of errors with this great glove work. And the thing is, he takes pride in it, and he works very hard at it. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. And Rios picks it up. Well, they followed the advanced scout reports to a T. They played the outfielder back that time, and he hit it right into the teeth of the defense. Two outs, bases empty. Here's the pitch. Plays off a called strike, 0-1. Uh, Got to be feeling good today. Picked up a couple hits in the game last night. The pitch. Strike Pena two. with a strike two. Good pitch. Well, he couldn't have asked for a better pitch. He likes the ball down the middle like every hitter, and he got a fastball. You got to swing the bat. Oh, oh, tough one to lay off right there, that fastball. One and two. The one two on its way. And he leaves that one alone. Ben Zobris, patience, and that'll even up the count. Oh. Tough pitch to lay off that time. Full count, 3 2. Here's the payoff pitch. He swings and nails a liner. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. And they're held in check here in this half inning. And it'll be the White Sox. And Beckham's in the box. Last season uh, did not have any hits. One at bat off J.P. Howell. Here's the first pitch. There's a swing and a line drive. And he gets that one down. His second hit. Two for four today. So that brings Alex Rios to the plate. Well, that's the start they wanted right there. You get the first guy on with the inning. No outs. Big things could happen now. 
No one out and a runner on first. And he starts Rios out. He's up for that first pitch and misses 0 and 1. Credit the catcher on that one. That's a good low target setting up and he hit the target. Good execution. That pitch was way too low, but he swung at it anyway. It's a strike. Good sinker that time, but it's ruled a ball. One and two. Swing and a miss. That's a changeup. Down on strikes, one out. Look at the big break on that pitch. That's huge. At 82 miles per hour, that's a tough pitch. He pulled the string right there. Must have been looking for the fastball. Swings right through the changeup for strike three. It's going to be Przinski. He's in the top edge. Swing and a hot shot. And it gets through a two for four ball game. Now Tremendous situation the now for the White Sox. Martian looking to knock in a run. 0 2 last year against Howell. One out with runners at first and second. The pitch. Swing, hit. This one's to Upton. Two down. Now batting for the Chicago White Sox. And it's Mark Kotze in the box now. Grounded out Mark last time. Kotze. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Swings and misses. The sinker, 0 and 1. Uh, two outs in the inning here, but runners on first and second. You've got to knock the ball Kotze. down in the infield. Don't let it get to the outfield where they could pick up another run and see if he can get a force out at one of the bases. You're the out. slider swung out and missed. Struck him out. Side gone. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. The White Sox, 10. Rays, 5. It's going to be Kapler. He'll start things off here in the summit. Number 27, Gabe Kapler. He delivers. First pitch, a slider outside, 1-0. Oh. Look, Gary, with this big a lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes. Get outs right now. 1-0 oh is a fastball that runs away, 2-0. Oh. Last season, he uh, had a 1-for-7 off the White Sox here in Chicago. Third pitch to him, swung on and missed, strike one. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. Fastball on the block. He doesn't get the call though, and it's three and one. That fastball is in there. He lays off it now. Three two. A nice four seamer right there. That one's clearly on the outside corner. He hit the spot. Yeah! Payoff pitch coming. Swung on line softly right field line. Makes its way through for a single. State Farm leaderboard. Uh, look at the teams with the most runs produced from last year's season. Number one, the Yankees. The Angels in second. The Red Sox third. The Twins fourth. And at number five on the list, the Rays. Well, this is a pitcher's dream. When you have an offense like this on your side, you know you're going to get a ton of runs. You don't have to be so precise. You can let runs score because you know your offense is going to pick you up. The good thing about this team is they like to score runs. They like to score them early in the game. That gives your team a lot of confidence. Takes a swing at that fastball. Doesn't get to it. One and two. Fastball just about had him, and it's a 2-2 count. Now Przinsky positions himself. This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. It's back towards the wall, and he still puts it away. Now up to the plate for the Tampa Bay Rays. Center fielder. Four. And here's B.J. Upton. He's hitting 333 lifetime off the White Sox. Here's the pitch to Upton. Starts him out with a fastball for a strike. Okay, one out here in the seventh inning. I mean, you have to like the way this is going. They're looking good. The pitch is throwing strikes. The defense making plays. They've got a big lead. Everything feels good. Outside for a ball, and it's two and one. Well, anytime one of your middle relievers throws over 45 pitches, you got to wonder how much more he has left. Might want to get someone else up out there.
Here's the pitch. Fastball got him two down. Boy, he showed him a great rhythm on the mound in that at bat. A great rhythm and a great sequence. He strikes him out on that fifth pitch, and he set him up perfectly. Runner on here for Deanna Navarro. He singled his last trip. First pitch, here it comes. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And there's the third out. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand it. The White Sox still ahead. And for Sednik's batting. Left fielder, number 24, Scott Sednik. And here's the first one. Drilled towards third. Into the corner, likely extra bases. And it's up against the wall. He's in there at second base, still no one away. Number 10, Alexi Ramirez. Well, what a great way to get things started. Leading off the inning with the double. Put yourself in scoring position early. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. And he's got a chance at third. So they can't make the play. But Gary's to make the error right there. You just don't want to do that. It's just not good baseball. Hit hard to second. Zobris, that's one away. And that will bring a run in. They're able to get the out at first base, but I'm not sure they shouldn't have tried to cut down the runner at the plate. And it's Paul Canerco now. Well, they've definitely got a rhythm going right now, each player feeding off the other. Now, Garrett, as you can see, this offense just keeps a shot up the middle. And Canerco retired. For the Chicago White Sox. Fielder. Carlos Quinton at the plate with two away. A couple of RBIs thus far. Well, they find themselves ahead in this one, and obviously two big at bats from him so far in the game, driving it around with a base hit, and then the home run, driving the ball out of the ballpark. So getting his pitches and doing some damage. First pitch to Quinton. Circle change, cut on and missed 0 and 1. No hits, only one at bat last season off Howell. Swing sits this one pretty well, deep right center. This one finds its way around, rolling all the way to the wall. And he ends up at second. That's a double. Second pick, number 15, Jordan Beckham. Well, he's having himself a day right here in this one. Two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. And we've got Dan Wheeler out on the mound as the Rays decide to bring in a reliever. Johnny gets going here against these White Sox bats. What do you smash towards the middle? Picked up by Bartlett. Throws to first in time. That's three down. So they score once on two hits. One man left. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Leadoff hitter Carl Crawford flew out last time. Number 13, Carl Crawford. Here's Crawford's first look. And that's on the outside corner for a strike. Well, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so th they need a big inning here. They can't wait till the ninth to try to come all the way back. They need to try to do something now. Hit on the ground, up the middle. Back up. One away now. And we've got Bartlett batting. He's had one hit four times up.
Base is empty with one away. Here's the first pitch. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. Now it's two away. Third number three. Evan Longoria at the plate. Two outs and nobody on. Here's the delivery. And there's ball one. Uh, Gary, I think right now that uh, you've got to consider trading outs for runs if, if you're pitching. I mean, listen, uh, just keep getting outs right now. There's a swing high and deep into center field. Way, way back there. Goodbye, home run. They chip a run off that. Still down by five. Well, it's been a lopsided game for a while, but Tampa Bay still showing some life and some firepower. See if they can build some confidence for later. And we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. Johnny faces these Tampa Bay hitters today. What's he concentrating on? Well, if I was still playing, Matt Thornton is the type of guy I would not want to face. You're talking about a left-handed pitcher who is absolutely dominating against left-handed hitters. A fastball in the mid to upper 90s and a big sweeping slider that once he establishes that fastball, he'll get lefties to chase down and out of the strike zone. What makes him so special, though, is he can get righties out just as well as he can lefties. He's a complete pitcher coming out of that bullpen. Fastball swung on and missed, side retired. So they cut into that deficit a bit with the home run, still well behind. Nice job by the Rays. They've got to work their way back, and they've started. And Alex Cerritos to lead off. Had a couple of hits, four trips to the plate. You know, they're losing a little bit in the defensive department with this change. It may be geared more toward offense. It's just towards the middle. Now it's going to bring up A.J. Brzezinski. We're well, talking about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. Runner on first. The first pitch and a swing and a miss on Wheeler's pitch. Well if you're going to be late on the fastball you're going to have trouble hitting up here and he's struggling right now. There's a swing a ball hit high deep straight away left. Goodbye a two run homer. Now with that two run homer they extend that lead to seven. Well, that was a no-brainer right there. We knew it was gone as soon as it left the bat. Steve, when you're in left field, you don't even bother to turn around. You don't want to see it land. What a bomb. Now and back. here's Martinez. Number Empty bases, three outs to go Mark here. Tien. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. And that's by him 0 1. And Steve, uh, this is the point in the ball game where you are really putting line towards second. Zobrist, one away. And it's Mark Kotze in the box now. He's gone one for one lifetime off Wheeler. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Well, I tell you what, you throw a cutter with that velocity, that's a great pitch. You understand why the hitter swung late. And Conte retired. Now it's two down. Number 24. And Posednik's batting. Two hits, five trips to the plate for him. First pitch to him. Oh, what a drive. He smashed it. Upton to field this one. That's caught. Side is retired. They had a couple more runs here and extend their lead even further. 
White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Quick look at Ozzie Guillen looking up. Great game his club has put together. Things have gone really well. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. They've decided it's time to bring a new arm into this one. Steve, what's he looking at as he sees this Tampa Bay lineup? Well, you take a look at this big body guy and Bobby Jenks out on the mound right here, and you know it's about power because of his size, but it's his off-speed pitches, the secondary pitches, the slider, the changeup, the curveball that make him overall effective. First pitch on the way. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. One away. Actually, you know, winning big right now. You just want to go out there, make plays, throw strikes, force them to try to put multiple hits together to get back into this game. It's going to be Kapler. Lifetime. He's uh, picked up no hits in one at bat off Bobby Jenks. And the uh, first pitch was a strike. Got about 0 1 right now. I don't think he liked that call very much, but the reality is he couldn't hit that any day of the week. That's a great pitch. Jenks with a delivery. Oh. And that one will head all the way to the backstop for a ball. Oh. That's a foul ball. Swing and a miss. Slider two down. Now, Gary, that's an outstanding slider. That great late action with two strikes. Not much you can do with that one. Tough one to hit. Here's the first pitch. And that one is a fly ball. This could do it. That's going to be a wrap. Final out of the ball game. White Sox win this in a lopsided victory. A dominating performance, Gary. And we present our Pepsi Clutch Performance Award. Paul Canerco. Canerco just made all the difference. Yeah, I mean, this guy came out and made this team look like world beaters today. Couple of hits, and he went big fly. All in all, it adds up to a nice day's work, and they come away on top. Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Uh, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings, but the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. Now that time again, thanks for being with us today, Major League Baseball. Steve Phillips, John Crock, and the rest of our great 2K sports crew. I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks, everybody.